Hello, my name is Kevin Hind and in this brief presentation I just want to look at the income and substitution effects for perfect substitutes but as you'll see there is no income effect the only effect from a price change is a substitution effect first of all though let's look at the possibility of what, what do we mean by a perfect substitute well the first thing to think about is a consumer who might be willing to trade let's say one unit of brand X cola for one unit of brand Y so one would draw the indifference curve uh, like this if they were given for example uh, if they had one brand Y um, a cola bottle and they wanted uh, you know they wanted to get one brand X they'd switch one for one there'd be a one for one trade that consumer would be willing to trade one unit of brand X cola for one unit of brand Y uh, uh, equally you know if they had two brand Y uh, they'd give up two brand Y in order to get two brand X uh, of cola uh, and so on uh, for three cola uh, brand Y and four uh, brand Y colas um, what we're saying is that the marginal rate of substitution of x for y is equal to 1. They would actually, uh, in order to get one extra uh, cola brand x, one unit of cola brand x, they'd give up one unit of cola brand y. And that's a constant right away uh, across uh, the way they would exchange. Uh, so... For this particular consumer, brands X and Y are what they call perfect substitutes. And it sort of makes sense. You can probably think of your own brands of cola uh, and whether or not you were entirely indifferent uh, between one brand or another. Okay, And if you were entirely indifferent between one brand of cola one uh, uh, relative to another, then your uh, indifference curves would look like these dashed lines here. But what would happen if the price changed of one of these particular brands. So let's start giving some uh, labels. We've got one indifference curve, we're calling it U1 here. Uh, four brand Y colas could be consumed or alternatively, and to get the same level of satisfaction, you could have four brand X colas. So um, this consumer would be entirely indifferent between those two points or indeed points on the on the curve um, so it could be for example three brand Y colas and one brand X cola uh, two brand Y cola and two brand X cola or one brand Y cola three brand X cola um, and that's the fact that they are perfect substitutes in order to get one more brand uh, X cola they'll give up one brand Y cola um, and that's our indifference curve for this particular consumer now the other part of this is that we need to think about uh, the, the constraint because it, the point about indifference curve analysis is that uh, individuals are trying to maximize their satisfaction the utility subject to uh, constraints imposed upon them by the income they have and the prices of the goods and services uh, that they want to try and buy so what we've said here is let's say that the consumer's income is 12 pounds in total that makes the numbers nice and easy and that the price of x brand x is three pound a unit and the price of of brand Y cola is four pound a unit. Well, not unsurprisingly, if that is the case, uh, clearly this yellow line B1 is showing the um, the relative prices of brand X. Uh, that is relative the price of X over the price of Y. Um, but you know, if you wanted to buy, just to look at the budget line. If you if you wanted to buy brand Y with your £12 of income you could actually because it costs £4 for each bottle or unit um, it will actually mean that you can buy three brand Y colas uh, however because the price of X is £3 a unit then clearly 
uh, you could buy with your £12 income four bottles of Brand X. So this consumer would quite, uh, you know, easily, you know, if, if they were an optimal, sensible, rational consumer, um, would actually buy four Brand X bottles of cola or units of cola. There'd be at point X down here, uh, and that would be their equilibrium point. Is it what they call a corner solution? Uh, but it's just, and it's a little bit trivial in one sense, but it does show us that when we've got perfect substitutes, in this particular case, we just consume one brand, the cheapest brand in this case. Uh, so that's the initial equilibrium. Uh, the What happens though if the, the price of uh, cola, this particular brand X Cola actually doubles in price from three pounds to six pounds. Well, what happens is that the budget line B1 pivots to uh, B2, and what that means is you can still buy the same with your twelve pound income. Uh, you can still buy the same amount of brand Y, but now you can only buy half as much brand X. So you've gone from uh, budget line B1 to budget line B2 and there's a new set of relative prices well obviously now the equilibrium has been disturbed we're no longer at X well where are we going to be well remember that there's a whole family of these indifference curves that the consumer has and what we see is that uh, the consumers because the price has gone up actually the uh, satisfaction the consumer gets has actually fallen. Uh, we've gone from indifference curve U1 to indifference curve U2. Uh, that's a lower level of indifference in this particular case. And ultimately, um, we get a new equilibrium at point Y, uh, where the consumer now switches away from brand X towards brand Y. There's effectively what that's called a substitution effect. The psychological response that emanates from a price change. So the, as the price changes, this particular consumer um, will switch entirely away from brand X and towards brand Y. They consume, instead of consuming four bottles of or units of brand X, they were... Uh, originally because of the price rise the doubling of price of X they now switch entirely to brand Y they're, they're consuming three units of brand Y at point Y here and they've substituted away from brand X which is now seen to be much higher in price uh, whereas brand Y is relatively lower in price their equilibrium is at Y because they're entirely indifferent uh, between X and Y. Uh, so what we have here is a price change which has no income effect. The, the only impact is a substitution effect, which is why, of course, they're really called perfect substitutes. And if you were to draw the demand curves, whether or not you were thinking about Marshall or, or John Hicks's way approach to deriving demand curves, they'd be exactly the same. So you can, if you put a, I haven't drawn it here, but if you had units of brand X on your horizontal X and the price of uh, brand X, and you started off with, first of all, uh, a price of three pounds, you know, your, your quantity axis would show you consuming four units of brand X. But of course, when you, your price goes to six pounds, then ultimately you actually have zero demand for uh, brand X. So you could clearly draw a demand curve. Uh, one would assume here for the sake of simplicity that the um, the, de the demand curve would be linear but it would be downward sloping but there would be no difference in the approach between Marshall and Hicks. Both demand curves would be the same. So there we have it. We've said that with perfect substitutes the there is only a substitution effect when a price changes, there is no income effect, and that the Marshall and Hicksian demand curves are exactly the same. Thanks very much for listening.